Let's make a quick program that does change a thousand to two thousand. So we'll call it test memscan dot c. Let me just get the basics up and running. Okay, so we'll have a global variable called val. Start it at zero and we'll print out the address of val so we can verify that we found it in the right place. So we'll also have two thousand. So let's set val to a, a thousand and then as we did previously, just wait for a key press. And we'll wait for another key press before we exit. Let's also make a few values that don't change from a thousand. So if we make a few dummy values. That way we know we've definitely identified the right one that's changed. OK, let's save that. Let's bring up a separate window now and compile that. Test memscan. It's that compiled. Let's run it. So it's written the address. It's written a thousand at this address and is now waiting for a key press. So meanwhile, Let's go back to where we're running uh, the actual scanner from and let's rerun task list. Uh, test memscan is 4104. So let's run memscan with 4104. So it's found a thousand in a few places. So now if we hit enter there, so address 404010 should have changed from a thousand to two thousand. Let's see if the scanner has found it. Well, there's the address that it managed to find. If we hit again. And as expected, the only one it's found that changed is the address that matched. There it is. So that seems to be working for the equals case. Let's now implement support for the increased and decreased conditions. You see we added them to the enum here. So let's in our update scan function. We'll add support in here. Now the increase and decrease conditions rely on you knowing what the previous value of that address was. So let's make a variable for that here. Call it prevval. And we can read it in these cases here at the same time that we set tempval. So in the case of a byte size, previous val is going to be this. So what we're doing there is we're looking at the the buffer as it is currently before we've copied the latest contents into it at the appropriate offset which is our local offset plus how much we've read so far and we're casting it to a byte pointer so we can do the same for the two byte case where is it be a short and the same for the four byte case where it'd be an unsigned int so now that we've got our previous value, we can add the cases in here. So for the case condition increased, we simply set the is match value to be true if temp val is now greater than previous val. 
and similarly for the case of decreased is match and it's just true if temp val is now less than previous val so let's go over that again quickly we read fresh from the process into temporary buffer and that determines our temp val from temp of and the previous val is determined from what's in the memory blocks buffer currently as in the last time the buffer at that offset got updated was in the last search because this buffer doesn't get updated this time round until the end where we do the mem copy that's why we have this temporary buffer and not just do the read process memory directly into buffer because it gives us this opportunity to compare with previous values so let's try changing our test to test for say the decreased condition so we'll leave search for a thousand and we'll change this part to searching for decreased and the value now doesn't matter so we'll also change our little test program so we need a thousand to decrease now so we'll change it to 999 let's say save that so let's recompile memscan and let's also recompile the test so let's run the test now so it's written a thousand we need to rerun task list because the piddle have changed 8040 so as before it found the various addresses that we put a thousand into now it's going to write 999 at that address and we're searching for values that have decreased and it's correctly identified the address where the a thousand has decreased so most of the core elements of the scanner seem to be in place and working correctly we just need to add a couple of utility functions um, called peek and poke and these will just allow us to read and write individual memory locations and export that functionality to the user so the poke function will take the process handle it will take the data size the address in the process we're examining to poke at and a value so we just need to forward this on to write process memory so we pass in the handle the address as a pointer the value we pass in the address of the value and then the number of bytes to write from that location this works because the Intel architecture is little endian. If it was big endian we'd need to worry about adjusting this address depending on the data size but for little endian you don't need to worry about that. And if this returns zero then it failed so we'll just print out in that case. And similarly the peak function again takes a handle and the data size and an address but this time it returns the value so let's change its return type so this is the value that will be read we'll just default it to zero the handle and the address and the address of the the value that will read the bytes into and the data size and if that's null return zero we'll just print error and return the value 
to the outside world.